right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to welcome back all the way up in LA, <laughs> which could mean like a two hour drive or a 10 hour drive, depending on traffic. But up in LA is Runa Bayus. How are you doing, Runa? I'm welcome good. back. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked to Runa like a, a couple of years ago, and now we want to talk again. But this time we want to talk about uh, the True Power Institute and why we need to put focus on our relationship in, to power in order to elevate uh, leadership. So, Runa, when you talk about relationship to power, what do you mean by that? I think uh, that for most of us, we, we have a strange relationship with power like we have with money it feels like it's a taboo topic to talk about. So we avoid it. And uh, most people walk through life thinking that they have no power. Some people walk through life wanting more power, doing everything they can to, to get power and hold on to it. And we are of course seeing that in our political arena mm -hmm. uh, all over the planet at the moment, uh, jeopardizing democracy. Uh, so for me, that is, uh, in a way, abuse of power. And I think we are very much out of balance like we are uh, with, with the climate, which is out of balance with nature. So I think we humans are also out of balance with, with power, which is causing actually our imbalance with nature. Yeah, you know, it's a very interesting concept, but I, mean, I, I totally agree with you. I think most people, a lot of people believe they have less power than they do and, uh, and believe that other people have more power than they do. I, I, I always think it has to start here with yourself. And the, the greatest power you can, it, it, the greatest power you have is the power of, of self-reflection and how you show up in the world. Uh, that's exactly how I see it. So most people think of external power when we talk about power, positional power, people in leadership, people in corner offices, people in, in the Senate. Uh, or president of the United States, uh, but we all have power, and uh, you know it's there for the taking if we just <laughs> if we have an intention to tap into it. And that to me is really about cultivating our leadership from the internal, and also in connection to something bigger than ourselves, connection to our soul, connection to source. So instead of hoping and wanting power or think you have no power, external power. We actually need to do that uh, reflection that you talk about and kind of claim our own power. Yeah, no, I love that statement, claim your own power, because yeah, I think I think where people make the mistake sometimes is like, if you if you can't lead yourself and if you can't find, you know, leadership within your own, uh, you know, your own environment, like whether that is, you know, being a, a great parent or being a great spouse or somebody in the locality like this. And, but I, I, I think people totally underestimate the fact that, yeah, you have to lead yourself first and you have to show that you are able to lead yourself before you can ever lead other people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, uh, you know, it starts with uh, us as children starting to check what power we have and what we have not. And of course, our parents are the first ones to, to put limitations on us. But often um, things happen in, in childhood that uh, we interpret as little babies or little children that we don't have power. So people go into adult life disempowered, or we call it often like wounded, having the wounded ego. And then people go in and maybe take external power positions, but they are leading from a, a place of woundedness for a place of fear and a, a place of lacking. So that absolutely colors the way that they lead in their companies, for instance. So that's really the course of uh, what we call toxic leadership, which we see now after COVID, so many people are leaving the the workplace, uh, not only because of say money, but also because they feel they have not been cared for, uh, they have not been taken care of during COVID, the workload is too heavy, they're going into burnout, but also they're just sick and tired of uh, the toxic leadership, which to me, the way I describe it is being powered over. Uh, being powered of, over. Very yeah, good. instead of 
power being given to them or they being empowered to be in their own power. And then if everyone did that, then they collaborate from that. So there's a much more autonomy. And that's what people are really wanting. And I think this new era we are going into is really taking us from the command and control. It is a very masculine way of leading. It's very patriarchal. It's based on a, a very old structure. We have outgrown that and it doesn't work for us anymore. So we are really screaming for something new, which I think is going to be much more around collaboration and partnership and um, honoring all our intelligences and uh, all aspects of ourselves, which means for me, both positive and uh, positive aspect of the masculine energy as well as of the feminine energy. And this goes for men and women and all gender. Yeah, that are, absolutely. And I think the other part there that you just touched on, and I think this is something that, you know, unfortunately, most of us don't learn early enough in life, um, is to start to question our relationships to things, as you're saying, maybe it's your relationship to money, maybe it's your relationship to scarcity, maybe it's your relationship to people, it could be a number of things that follow you from, as you say, from childhood. And it always seems like, you know, kind of little trite when people say, oh, well, you know, you should look back on like what were your what were you surrounded by as a child what were the attitudes and all that but the reality is that those carry through they're hidden from public view but they come out in how you operate right and and so i think that's really what the calling is for to to take responsibility and and just to, as a play of words uh, i talk about going from it re, really from force uh to power or true power and if I play with the word true, then T is for truth, seeking truth, living from truth. The uh, R is for responsibility, that we take responsibility for who we are and how we are. And when we do that, we start to kind of own up to the blind spots and own up to things that we might be able to tweak, limited beliefs, which of course are caused by fear. And when we start to be able to clean up our thoughts, our emotions uh, and all the blaming that goes on and take that blaming energy and direct it to, to ourselves uh, in a positive way. Uh, I think then we are on a way to, uh, to what I call more of a, like a conscious leadership practice. Yeah, and, and I love what you just said there about the, the responsibility and accountability piece, like personal responsibility, personal accountability. I, you know, there's a lot of people who would avoid that or afraid of that or whatever, but the reality is that it's hugely liberating when you actually say, I own my situation, good or bad, mm -hmm. I own it. Were there external factors that contributed? Sure, but I own it because it's me and I'm the common denominator here and uh, mm -hmm. I'm the only one who can change this circumstance, if you like. So that's hugely that's hugely liberating and powerful when you do that, but a lot of people avoid that. Right, but that is literally stepping into your power. Yeah. That is only your power. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. And what I'm trying to do with the work in the True Power Institute is to maybe first and foremost, wake people up to uh, having been asleep to the responsibility of, of taking, taking uh, care of their own lives their own health, their own well-being. Yes, companies have to support them and care for them, but also they need to take responsibility themselves. And, uh, and so I see kind of power shifts in a number of areas, both in, in terms of mindset, uh, thinking, uh, uh, letting go of the scarcity mindset and, and going more into the abundance mindset. We could nearly say love mindset. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think you're correct, especially the abundance mindset, because if you live in a scarcity or you have a finite mindset, um, then you're always you're always competing and thinking that when somebody else wins, you lose. Right. You know, because there's only a finite pie. But when you start to look on an abundant mindset and realize there's plenty and more uh, for everybody, then you then you can actually get in a situation where you look at somebody who's been successful and you say, good for them. I should, I need to try that. Or I should, you know, that gives me encouragement to try. Right. Absolutely. And that, you know, once we, we start to tap into the abundance mindset, we can go from the me and mine to the we and ours. And that's, that's another mindset. I, I feel we are, are moving into a power shift that uh, say in organizations, uh, you know, I need to get this promotion. I need to 
to get a raise, I need to get that project or whatever it is, uh, instead of looking at the bigger vision of the team or of the company and say, we need to uh, make this happen. We need to think of the future and create a better company or a back, better service. So that, that, that's definitely a, a mindset shift. Yeah, and I think, as you said, truth and responsibility kind of go together because you have to be truthful and most of all with yourself. And it's become too easy and you know promoted across is to always look for external you know reasons why things aren't aren't going your way but you just came back something earlier there is you know sitting around waiting for your company to train you or to promote you or to whatever yeah it's nice if that happens that's great if that happens but you should never expect it to happen you should sort of say okay i should invest in myself it's like i mean once upon a time when i was first in business way back way back when in the dinosaur era, um, you know, it was, if I wanted to get training for myself, I didn't have the money to do that. I didn't have the resources. Yeah. Maybe I could go to a library or something, but today you have so many resources that even if you don't can't afford to, you know, pay for somebody like you to help them to help, you have so many resources at your fingertips. So there's no excuse not to be investing in yourself. Absolutely. And I think it's really important for people, all people, and particularly leaders in, in or those that want to go into uh, leadership positions uh, in organizations to take uh, ownership of their own, because the leadership journey, I, I really talk about it as committing to your own journey and, uh, and understanding that that journey is, is never ending. Uh, and mm -hmm. you don't want it to end anyway, once you, you get get on the journey, you get on the path, you, you realize that, uh, you know, as you shed your wounding, as you shed the negative beliefs and all that, you get lighter and lighter. So it becomes more interesting, not necessarily easier, but definitely more interesting. And it gives you more tools to deal with life in general. And I think that's what a lot of people are waking up with now in this COVID time, that they were kind of unprepared to be thrown out of their little comfort zone. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. And I think the other thing too is, uh, as you said, that a lot of people would be thrown out of their comfort zones. Some that was traumatic for some people, but I think gradually over time, it's been also illuminating and liberating for a lot of other people because you realize, hey, I can operate a little bit differently um, or maybe spending time, you know, maybe being working virtually because I want to spend more time with my family because it makes me a better person and it gives them what they deserve well, then that's maybe what I need to look for going forward. So I think there's, yeah, I think there's a, a, there's a lot of changes. And I think there's, to be honest, I think all the excuses are gone now for, for people not to take control of their own lives. Yeah. Uh, and, and I actually, uh, if there is one word to, to express what I felt in the beginning, you know, of course, I was sad about the COVID and all the people that were dying and getting sick and people losing their loved ones. But, but the, the word excitement, uh, came up for me because it feels like that for so many of us who have been in the so you could say, leadership development space, we have been waiting for something big to happen to wake people up, to wake leaders up, and now we have it. And uh, that, that is, uh, I definitely see that around me and in my clients, that they are looking for something more. They're looking for deeper relationships, deeper experiences. Uh, deeper expression of who they truly are and mm -hmm. uh, and really reflecting on how did I uh, how did I spend my time and energy before COVID and I want to be really intentional in the way I design moving forward yeah and and as as and in leaders in business I think they have to start to embrace new ways of of working and operating, you know, because uh, hybrid companies are going to be there. I mean, there's going to be, you know, ver people are going to be virtual forever. Some people, some people, it'll be, uh, you know, they'll be in offices sometimes. Maybe they won't be in offices at all, but they have to build hybrid working models. Um, and to do that, that requires leaders to lead in a different way. Absolutely. You can't, I mean, let's face it, you can't fall into the trap of favoring the people who happen to be outside your door as opposed to the people who happen to be <laughs> on Zoom, right? That's right. Yeah, no, it, it, I think it's really calling for uh, us to rethink how we interact and connect with people on, on all levels. And uh, I have been amazed, actually, how much intimacy one can create online 
I, I created a new program during the COVID time, which is a, a mastermind through Power Mastermind Groups. And uh, I've, I've been amazed of the relationship creation and intimacy that has cre been created between the members and that is ongoing. And these, these people have never met in person and maybe they will never meet in person, but still the trust is there, uh, the authenticity is there, uh, I, I want to say the love word again, literally, it becomes like a love fest uh, because people are in an intimate and safe space and they are going deeper. And I think that's what a lot of people are craving, especially after being in isolation for so long. Yeah, no, I, I do think and I think that whole thing about, you know, being, you know, more authentic and connecting and all of that. And, and I don't mean being more authentic. I mean, being authentic uh, being who you really are and you know I, I think all that is, is very very is obviously very important it has come to the fore more and I think the other challenge is it has really challenged that you have to learn multiple ways of communicating I mean well, as you said if you go back to command and control once upon a time there was one way of communicating you just basically told it like it was and left um, now you have to realize that people consume information differently people may be in different places wherever it means that you have to really pay attention and as you say be intentional about how you communicate and how you communicate to different audiences different individuals etc right and and there is another aspect uh, of that which is coming coming into focus and that is really sensing sense making we talk a lot about listening in leadership mm -hmm. and now we are talking about sensing sensing into what the pe person might be feeling or what might want to emerge from that person or from the situation in terms of guidance. So instead of having, say, a strategy plan, uh, which we know now have been thrown out the window a lot of times with, with COVID, the people are together needing to really sense into the situation and where they need to go in order to find solutions to move forward. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with you. And I think I think maybe maybe COVID in some ways has heightened everybody's senses a little bit because th there was the isolation, there was all the other stuff going on. I think maybe it did heighten people's senses. I think now you got to hold on to that, hold on to that heightened sense. Right, which is hard in such a polar polarized um, community or polarized society, we would say. Um, so, but, but at the same time, I think the polarization is coming from because we have been unearthed in the shadow. These things are nothing new. They have been there. They've just been uh, hidden uh, under a lot mm -hmm. of layers that have been, you know, not talked about, but now things are coming up. And I'm, I'm hoping that with time, we clear this out and we can go to, to a more elevated way of, of being and, and living and working together. Wow. Yeah, no, I agree. We can only hope. Wow. It's, uh, um, right. And for anybody listening or watching out there, yeah, it, it looks it looks a bit rough right now, but there are definitely signs of change coming. I do think positive change, you know, people, people, start, as you said at the very beginning, people starting to own their own power. Yeah, I, I think that that's what's going to change. It's when it's when good, honest, ethical people start to own their power then things change yeah and and step forward and use it and then empower others to do the same mm -hmm. yes yes i think that's a that's a fantastic point to finish on actually underlying that is an empower so it's not just your personal journey you obviously have to do your own self-reflection and self-awareness but then when you when you step into your own power, you got to go out and empower other people. So then it becomes them. So then it starts to spread. And even if it's only to a few people around you, well, guess what? The ripple effect of that can be huge. Exactly. That's how we change the world. One person at a time. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. Because that's a, to be honest, that's a bit of a soapbox of mine, because I, I always think that sometimes you see people who are happy to sit around and I would say sit around having a, a glass of wine or a beer and start pontificating about mega world problems and blah 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 which they have zero impact on or zero but if they took that energy and focused it on being the best person they can being the best spouse the best partner best parent best person the community now you're making a difference so maybe enough of the pontificating on massive global issues and more about how do I affect the world that I occupy. 
yeah, the, I think that is, we do not change the world if we don't change ourselves. So that is the, the starting point. Yeah, no, I, that's a great, I, that's an even better point to finish on. Perfect, <laughs> love it. All right, well, listen, all of Runa's uh, information is going to be below this video, and I would really encourage you to check out the, uh, to check out the True Power in uh, Institute. But before we go, Runa, please do tell people a little bit more about it. Uh, the True Power Institute? Uh, well, I, I think about it like a little bit like a think tank. Uh, it's, it's where uh, I nearly say to my activism, I go on my soapbox uh, through my speaking, through my writing, uh, and through my programs and mentoring. Uh, to, in a way, hold space for people and leaders who are interested in stepping into their true power and lead and live from, uh, from more intentionality and with, uh, with, the, with the aim, really, and, and this is really big for me, that we together co-create a new future for our children and the next generation to come. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, I would I would absolutely encourage you. The links are below. Check it out. Uh, this is important stuff. And I think I agree with Rune. I think we're going through a, a sea change and it may take time as these as sea changes tend to happen over time. They they people always think they're like tsunamis, but they really are. Uh, so but the thing is, put your best foot forward, step into your power and let's get going. Yeah. Thanks, John. Great to be with you as always. Yeah, listen, thanks, Runa. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again really soon. Thank you.